fussing. What about something else? I'm telling you, I don't like it. I can smell them a mile away, and there is a ritual hate between us. Oh, I'll drink your beer and shut up. You're still on holiday, you know. Besides, you've only just come hey, out. Hey, keep it down, love. One pink gin, sir. About time. What have you been doing in that galley of yours? On second thoughts, don't answer that. I'm sorry you were kept waiting, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me, miss. Can I get you anything? What? Uh, no. What's the matter with you, mate? Uh, One moment, sir. Hey, sir. All right. What's the matter with you? Here, come hold her in. Uh, you got it? Yes, I have. What was your problem? Uh, 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 please keep to your seats, ladies and gentlemen. He's dead. He must have had a heart attack. And so young. Too young. Someone put ice stick in this beer. Murder? I'd better tell the captain. Hold it, Detective Sergeant Holland, CID. Scotting Richards here back to Britain on the expedition from Barcelona. I'll tell her for the captain and get back here fast. Why? Because brewers are not in the habit of putting arsenic in their beer. But I didn't put it in. I didn't say you did yet. But somebody must have. Good evening and welcome to Who Done It. Now you have just witnessed the death of a Mr. Richards. I know that people have been complaining about the quality of their beer lately, but this is getting ridiculous. Mm. However, don't all panic until we find out whether it is arsenic, more important, who put it there. Now in a moment, we will show the inquiry into that murder. And then we want you to guess, I mean, I deduce rather, who done it. But to help you in the studio, uh, we have uh, two teams of experts, and so they tell me, who will later cross-examine the suspects. Now, this week, our guests are a beautiful lady whose astute mind will, I'm sure, solve the problem in no time at all, Miss Honor Blackman. <laughs> and a gentleman who's been on the programme before and swears that he'll get it right, eventually, <laughs> Leslie Crowther. <laughs> a lady who obviously flies a lot, being a liver <laughs> bird, <laughs> Neris Hughes. And, of course, Captain Biggles himself, Patrick Mower. Yeah. Anushka Hempel is not well at the moment, but we all hope that she'll be back next week. And thank you for the flower, Anushka. I'm wearing it. Oh. Patrick gave it to me. Oh. He's got another one of his own. <laughs> uh, four members of our studio audience, chosen at random just before the show went on the air, will also try and solve who done it, so good luck to you. Now, I'd better just remind you, because people forget sometimes, that the guilty party is allowed to lie all the way through the programme, so don't trust in everything that you see or hear. So now let's rejoin Sergeant Hollins on a trident, a bound for London from Barcelona. Uh, the date of the flight, incidentally, is October the 25th, 1975. Yes, Miss uh, Ricky Howard. Huh? And you say she reacted with surprise? Yeah, she didn't expect old Twinkle Toes to creep up on her. Twinkle Toes? Oh, that's my nickname, Down the Roots. Anyway, I distinctly saw her trying to hear what those two were saying. Uh-huh. But how would a girl like that get hold of arsenic? Never no, 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 said she did yet. Could have been anybody, you mean. But don't you have to have a special permit to get it? You forget we're coming from Barcelona. In Spain, it's dead easy to get a hold of that if you know the right people. Oh, you are knowledgeable. Well, uh, <clears throat> why don't you search everyone till you find if anybody's got a bit of arsenic left over? Firstly, I haven't got the authority. Secondly, whoever did it would have hidden it somewhere. And this plane will be searched as a matter of course as soon as we land at Manchester. Now stop making inane suggestions. Let's get back to the beer you brought over. Ah, oh, well, if you remember, I serve one to your friend, your late friend, and one to that butch-looking gentleman on the other side. Not so loud. Did anybody see you getting the drinks here in the galley? And I come to think of it, yes. That, uh, that suave gentleman in the back row came in just as I was sorting out the order. Yeah. I won't be a moment, sir. I'm all fingers at the moment. I'd like a pink gin. Oh, I've never coughed one of them for ages. Bitters. I beg your pardon? You need bitters. Well, I haven't forgotten how to make them. Don't worry. Now, uh, where's the bitters? Well, honestly, I do wish those bee girls wouldn't muck about with the stock. I can't find anything at the moment. Oh, when you find it, bring me one of the back. Oh, suit yourself. Back to the treadmill. 
Here you are, madam. One gin and tonic. Oh, thanks very much. What's this? I ordered you a beer while you were in the room. Well, you might have asked me first, love. Would you like something else, sir? Eh? No, it's all free. Now, go on, put it down. I'll look at it. Here you are, sir. One vodka. Thank you. One beer. Oh, thank you. Some of us can sleep through anything. Some of us have to. Thank you. <clears throat> Oi. Uh, I've got you a beer. Uh. Now, I poured the beer out, so I can't imagine how any arsenic got into it. But it's not that easy. You see, people were probably walking up and down here all the time. Now, I was looking out of the window, so I could have missed something. Now, had you ever seen the dead man Richards before? No. I mean, I, I knew there was a prisoner and escort aboard, but uh, I didn't know him, did I? In fact, I never even said a word to him. Mm. Well, stick around, just in case I need you. Well, where do you think I'm going to go? We don't have parachutes, you know. Excuse me, Mr. Uh, Major Calvertson. Detective Sergeant Holland, CID. I'd like to have a word, if I may. Certainly. Are you still in the army then, Major? No, I retired a long time ago. Been a mercenary of late, more money in it. I'm knocked that off now. Not enough revolutions. Mm -hmm. I've just been down in Spain looking for a place to retire to. Thank you, but right now I'm more interested in the death of Richards, the passenger who was sitting in front of you. Also, without looking round, have you ever spoken to the young lady sitting across the aisle? No. Never met her in my life. Why? Well, the steward tells me she was very interested in the conversation with the people in front of her. And I just wanted to know why before I spoke to her. Oh, well, in that case, I think I can help you. Back in Barcelona, I was sitting in the lounge and I uh, observed an incident that'll clear that well, up. Just leave the passports hmm? in the bag, love. We're not going to need them again if we get to London. Uh, I'd just like to know where everything is, that's all, darling. Now, look, keep an eye on all this, will you? I don't trust anybody in these Spanish places. I'll be back in a minute. Do you know where it is? Yeah, it's in the corridor, isn't it? I saw it on the way in. Well, don't be long. We'll be boarding in a few minutes. Hello, darling. Oh, has the missus left you again? Don't keep reminding me she's my missus. Now, listen, I've just heard from London that all my stuff in that safety deposit box was nicked during that Mayfair bank job last week. But that's what we were going to live on, isn't it? Yeah, I know. So you'll have to lay low for a bit longer. Wasn't it insured? Don't be daft, darling. That's hot money. But don't worry. As soon as I catch up with a gang that nicked it, I'll get it back. What, honour among thieves? No, a bit of muscle. Now, I've got to go. She'll be right back. I'll phone you in London. And at that moment, you came in with Richards. So I presume you noticed anything else that happened. The point is, I wasn't aware of our friend over there's connection with the Mayfair bank job. That's why I particularly remember it. My daughter was hurt. She was in the bank at the time. Pneumonia. Yes. Mm. It's part of my job. You see, I'm on the case, and I remember there was a Culbertson girl injured. I temporarily blinded by ammonia. Not temporarily. She's lost part of her sight. If you're on the case, what are you doing down in Spain? I was bringing Richards back for that bank job. Might have been him that squirted the ammonia to your daughter. In that case, I'm not sorry. No, but I'm sorry to say it gives you a perfect motive. And being a mercenary, you wouldn't think twice about revenge. Mercenaries don't go around poisoning people. Who said anything about poison? You don't have to be a doctor to recognize the kind of convulsions he was having. Well, thank you for your help then, Major. Besides, I'm more the mad Mitch type. He was a colonel, sir. You're forgetting something, Sergeant. I'd never seen him before, so how could I tell which one of you two was Richards? I'll think about that one, sir. Excuse me. I'm Detective Sergeant Holland. Oh, hello. I'm Charlie Rattler. This is the wife, Elsie. Anything I can do to help? Well, I'd like to have a word with you, if you don't mind, sir. Over there, if you please. Excuse us. Now then, you want to know if I saw anything, right? In a minute. Did you know that the dead man was in the same line of business as you, Charlie? Go on. Fruit market, you know. No, GBH. I know your form, Charlie boy. It's as long as my arm. Armed robbery. Fraud, breaking an entry, you name it, you've done it. Well, there's no need to shout about it. Anyway, I'll give an all that up. 
Only got out the scrubs a few weeks ago, so I thought I'd take the wife on a little holiday. Sort of a second honeymoon. With a second wife and all. Second what? That girl back there. Somebody overheard you at Barcelona Airport discussing your future plans with her. I've even got grasses in Spain now. No doubt the wife won't know. So you'll be very willing to cooperate, won't you? You ought to be charged with blackmail. I probably will be, Charlie. But in the meantime, the dead man, Richards. Oh, was that his name? Never heard of him. He was a villain, eh? That's funny, I thought you were both coppers. What made you think that, then? Well, he was asleep most of the time. But just after we got that last round of drinks, he woke up, spotted me and gave me a very funny look. Did he say anything? No, but he looks as if he recognised me, the way you coppers do. Probably did, but not in the way you think. You see, Richards was in on the Mayfair bank job last week. What's it got to do with me? I was in Spain. <laughs> true, but a lot of your stuff went missing out of your box, didn't it? Yeah, well, it's true that the contents of my safety deposit box were uh, rifled. But it was all perfectly legitimate. I'm sure it was. Did you have any documents in there with your name on it? Yeah, why? Well, because he knew your name from the business. That's how he recognised you. Now, let's get back to the beer. I didn't drink it. I mean Richard's beer. Oh, yeah, well, I saw him drink it. And after that, all I can tell you is nobody else passed by me till he coughed it. Hmm, interesting. Now, don't move, please. I just want to have a word with your wife. Tell me, how do you propose to get the goodies from your safety deposit box back? Well, no doubt your grass told you, as he was one of the lads on the job. And another one of them just happened to be sitting right next to you. But there'd be no point in me killing him now, would there? Not unless he got rid of all the loot in Spain. Welcome back to Who Done It, where we're watching Sergeant Hollins trying to solve a murder 29,000 feet up. Leslie Crowther's already looking airsick. <laughs> now, all the panel will be questioning the suspects uh, sooner or later, but first we have a bit more action. So let me start by recapping the story so far. Sergeant Hollins was escorting a prisoner back from Spain when he suddenly died, presumably from arsenic poisoning. A Selwood, the air steward, remembers that Major Culbertson was in the galley when he was preparing the drinks. A Ricky Howard, another passenger from Barcelona, appears to know Charlie Rutland rather well. And now Sergeant Hollins is going to interview Charlie's wife, Elsie Rutland. Sorry to bother you, Mrs. Rutland. Call me Elsie. All right then, Elsie. Had you ever seen the dead man Richards before? No, should I? Not necessarily. It's just that he was wanted in connection with a bank job. And as Charlie, your husband... If Charlie didn't know him, I certainly wouldn't. Mm. Do you know any of the other passengers? Not that I'm aware of, no. And what about the girl behind you, Ricky? Oh, is that her name? Well, I don't know her. I've seen her around, of course, because she stayed in our hotel, but I never spoke to her. And what about Charlie? Oh, Charlie wouldn't bother with a girl like that. He's old enough to be her father. Besides, he knows which side his bread is buttered. <laughs> Quite. With you, of course. Tell me, what about his beer? What about his beer? Well, he said he didn't drink it, so I wondered. Oh, well, I ordered it, if that's what you mean. Now, you ought to remember that, come to think of it, because that was about the time the captain made his announcement. Up. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Captain Reed here. We're now flying at 29,000 feet over the French town of Nantes, which you can see out of your port, that is, the left-hand side windows. Now, unfortunately, low fog is preventing any planes from landing at Heathrow, so we are being diverted to Manchester. Transport arrangements are being laid on from there to London. I do apologize for any inconvenience, but it is a weather situation beyond our control. We should be landing there in uh, an hour's time. Yes, madam? Uh, a gin and tonic, please. And a beer for my husband. Right, madam. Um, I'm sorry about the diversion, but I'm afraid these things do happen, you know. Stuart, vodka from me, and the same as he had before, all right? Right. And then a bit later, Charlie came back and the steward served the drinks. Well, it's all right. I've already heard about that from the steward. One thing, though, um, does Charlie usually drink beer? Of course, that's why I ordered it. Only he didn't want this, as it happened, so uh, the steward cleared it away after all the fuss, you know. Fine. Well, I'll check that with him later. Uh, you can rejoin your husband now, Mrs. Rutland. 
Uh, if you don't mind. Oh. Thank you very much indeed. Miss Howard, isn't it? Yes, Ricky Howard. And you're the law. Who told you my name, anyway? Several people, including, of course, your close friend, Charlie. You've really been doing some nasty digging, haven't you? What's that got to do with your dead prisoner? Nothing, but it's just possible a mistake has been made. Now, the steward tells me you're very interested in the Rutland's conversation. So what? Charlie no doubt told you about our little problem with the bank road. I just wanted to know what they were talking about. Well, they'd hardly mention you. Elsie Rutland claims she doesn't know you. Does she indeed? Well, not officially, no. But she caught my eye a few times on this holiday, and believe you me, she knows all about us. Did you warn Charlie about that? No, it's just feminine intuition. He would never believe that. But I know she knows. No proof, mind you. If she had, she'd really go to town. Exactly. Did you notice if the Major was trying to listen to my conversation in front? No, not that I saw. He just read his book. Fine. One piece of advice now that he's lost his pot of gold. I should give up going out with villains like Charlie Rutland. I'll go out with whoever I like. I used to go out with another so-called villain before Charlie, if it interests you. What happened to him, then? He ditched me. Got me pregnant and ditched me. Sounds like a charming bloke. Who was it? No, oh, no. You're not going to get me to grass on anybody to the law, especially now he's on the run. On the run, eh? Look, I'm not saying any more about it, so just forget it. All right, then. Thank you, Ricky. See you in Manchester. You can go back to your seats now, Mr. Mrs. Rutland. Thank you very much. Selwood? Yes, sir. <coughs> Chief. <coughs> Did you clear away Charlie Rutland's beer glass? Yes, I, uh, I poured it away and cleaned the glass. Mrs. Rutland asked me to. Oh, she did, did she? Now, listen, I want you to twinkle toe up there to the captain. Ask him to radio ahead to Manchester. When we land, I want the local police to come on board and keep everyone in this area. I want a private room to call London. I want to confirm something first. Is that clear? Not at all, Hart, but I'll tell him what you said. Have you caught the murderer yet? No, but I know who it is. Well, if you haven't guessed it yet, don't worry, because now is the time the panel are going to get to work. But before that, let's welcome our suspects, shall we? Here they are. Now, panel, is there any part of this flight that you'd like played back to clarify a point? Oh, no, what would you like to see? Uh, I'd like to see the piece in the airport after Elsie goes to the loo and Charlie goes over to talk to Ricky. Right. Leslie, what would you like to see again? Well, I'd like to see Charlie Rutland going to the loo. I don't mean I'd like to see that. I mean, <laughs> you do see my point. I see exactly. Uh, I'd like to see where Charlie Rutland gets out of his aeroplane seat to go to the loo. Right. So you shall. Neris. I'd like to see where the Major goes into the bar and asks the steward for a gin and, and bitters, please. Well, the bit where the steward goes out and he's left there. Mm -hmm. Please. Right. Patrick? Now, I'm getting a message from Anushka. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't she tell us, we all say. She says she'd like you. to see the bit where our flat-footed friend uh, gives the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the villain uh, a drink. It's not a very clear message he's getting. No, no, no. It's a bit, you have to try a bit harder, Anushka. <laughs> say, say that again. It's where, where the policeman, that's right, the policeman gives a drink to, to the prisoner in the aeroplane. Rada, my dear, it will be yours. <laughs> That's yours and Anushka's. All right, panel, you can now have a go at the suspects, starting with one question each. Honor, where you go? Uh, I'd like to ask Charlie a question. Is, is it so that before you went inside, or even perhaps while you were inside, you drank beer? Yeah, I've always drank beer. Yeah. Why is it then that when Elsie ordered it for you, you looked so suspicious about it? Well, I don't think suspicious was quite a word. Uh... I'd had one or two in the hotel before I got to the airport and I just didn't fancy a drink, that's all. And you didn't drink it at all? No, not you? at all. No, I didn't touch it. Mm. 
Yes. Thank you. Uh, a question, please, Leslie. Yes, I'd like to um, ask uh, Freddie Selwood the, the question. Uh, Steward, I'd like to pin you down. Oh, I think I'd better rephrase that, actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> what I really meant was, are you in the habit of flicking ash into an empty beer can? Well, actually, I don't smoke very often, you see, but um, that particular moment, I, you know, was, nothing was happening very much. I thought it was a little break, so I had a smoke. No, I don't normally use um, ashtrays because we, we're not supplied with them, and there was a can handy. Was it the can that, uh, the, from the, the beer... I'm getting as bad as you now. <laughs> from which you poured the beer that uh, apparently contained the arsenic. Oh, I wouldn't know about that. I mean, they're all cans to me. I, I wouldn't know. But, you, I mean... That was the only can that appeared to be handy that was, had been opened. It was just an empty can that was on the side that was ready to be thrown away. I thought I'd use it, that was all. A lot of beer is drunk on a flight from Barcelona. Yes, there is. Uh, Sergeant Hollins, please, I'd like to ask you a question. Um, what station are you based at in London? Hammersmith. Hammersmith. And who's your superintendent? Craven. Ah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> where you go who were you going to ring when you got into London? You were going to make that phone call. Who were you going to ring? Well, I was going to ring him, actually, but uh, I, was, I had to report to Chief Superintendent Maloney. He's the chap in Manchester. And then, by courtesy, of course, and then on to Craven. Oh, I see. Thank you very much. Patrick. Yes, I'd like to ask uh, Ricky Howard. Can I call you Ricky? Um, a very pretty girl, travelling first class, holiday in Spain, three weeks. Can I ask you, what, what actually do you, what is your profession? Um, I'm a photographic model. A photographic model. Mm -hmm. If you were having an affair with Charlie, wouldn't it be rather dangerous to go to the same... I mean, if he, he's just come out of prison, you know, he's been in for... So he's going to be fairly busy with his wife, isn't he? You know? Um, <laughs> is, is there... <laughs> Charlie's a very active man. He can be busy with everybody. <laughs> I mean, you weren't, you weren't going to see much of him on holiday, were you? Charlie actually uh, set the holiday up and bought the tickets and planned everything, and we saw quite a lot of each other. Yes, I see. I'm used to it. I've known him a long time. OK, thank you very much. Yes, right, ready for the first playback. And the first playback is for Neris. Neris, you wanted to see uh, when the Major enters the steward's galley to ask for a pink gin. Yes. Keep looking. Right. <laughs> I won't be a moment, sir. I'm all fingers at the moment. I'd like a pink gin. Oh, I've never called for one of them for ages. Bitters. I beg your pardon? You need bitters. Well, I haven't forgotten how to make them. Don't worry. Now, uh, where's the bitters? Well, honestly, I do wish those bee girls wouldn't muck about with the stock. I can't find anything at the moment. Oh, when you find it, bring me one in the back. Oh, suit yourself. Back to the treadmill. <laughs> Was that an enormous you. help to you, Neris? My gosh, I've had flashes from a new score I've had. You have? Yes. Good. Hurrah. You're not the only yes. one. Yes, Pat. Uh, yes, I'd like to ask the Major a, a, a question. Um, you, know, you said that your daughter, it was your daughter, wasn't it, who was in the ammonia attack. Um, su just supposing, um, hypothetical question, if you had known that uh, Richards was involved in the attack, um, you said that you wouldn't have poisoned him because you were a mercenary and you, stood, you hinted that you would do more nasty things. If you had known, would you have been tempted to do something to him? I don't think so, no. There's an awful lot of hypotheses you're coming up with. Yes, we're I, The answer is I don't think I would have been tempted. We're uh, where would I have done it? On the plane? Just shot him? We're assuming that you didn't know it was him. I didn't know it was him. How was I to know it was him? Yes. OK. Thank, Thank you, you, Patrick. Ready for the next playback? And this is yours, Patrick. You asked for a replay of the fatal beer arriving in front of Sergeant Hollins and the victim. Yes. You are, sir. One vodka. Thank you. One beer. Oh, thank you. Some of us can sleep through anything. Some of us have to. Thank you. <clears throat> I've got you a beer. Yeah. I poured the beer out, so I can't imagine how any arsenic got into it. Any spirit messages? <laughs> yeah, uh, can I just ask um, uh, the, the Freddy, Twinkle Toes, um, wh what actually goes into a pink gin? Angostura bitters, 
You put that into it first of all. Yes. Um, you can either leave the bitters in if you want to, or, or you can swill it away. So, you, I mean, you could put the bitters in, swill it round and... Throw it away, then put the gin in. Uh, some people like to have soda with it, some with uh, water. Is, is there any possibility that, say, you could put bitters, if it was bitters, into a drink and then maybe put that glass there and put beer into it? So, by mistake? No, because, I mean, a beer glass is different to a gin glass. I mean, you never do it. Yes. And can I ask the Major, when, you know when you were looking in the galley for, for drinks, did you in fact find the bitters bottle that you were looking for? Yes. You did? Yes. I see. Donna, question? Yes. Uh, I would just like to go back to, to Ricky and ask you, um, uh, Charlie fixed up this holiday, right? Mm -hmm. And how long had you been on holiday? Well, we left on the um, 11th, just a fortnight. Yes. It was an exact fortnight. Uh, what was the point of your going on the holiday with him? Well, he I just mean, when his wife was with him. Well, Charlie's just come out of prison. Um, just wanted to be seen around, you mean? Um, no, Did I just wanted to be with him occasionally when I could. Did you not think it was rather tricksy to be in flagrante delicto with uh, <coughs> her ladyship around? Didn't, no, they never you? left Barcelona, no. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> there I must stop. You're ready for the next playback? Uh, this is for you, Honor. You asked to see part of the Major's flashback in the airport lounge when Charles Rutland talks to Ricky. Hello, darling. Oh, has the missus left you again? Don't keep reminding me she's my missus. Now, listen, I've just heard from London that all my stuff in that safety deposit box was nicked during that Mayfair bank job last week. But that's what we were going to live on, isn't it? Yeah, I know. So you'll have to lay low for a bit longer. Wasn't it insured? Don't be daft, darling. That's hot money. But don't worry, as soon as I catch up with a guy. You look more confused than ever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's helped at all, actually. It's probably helped somebody else. <laughs> yes, I hope so. Did you want to ask a question about it? Um, um, no, I do want... I would like to ask a, a, another yes. question, actually. Um, it's of um, Elsie. Um, did you... Are you aware that your husband knew this lady who was on the plane called Ricky? I had a pretty shrewd idea, but to tell you the truth, I wasn't too worried. It, did you know... Oh, we had a pretty good relationship between us, and at least it proves that he didn't turn ginger in the nick. I don't know that it proves like anything that. these days. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Muller. Uh, yes, I'd like to ask um, Charlie. Um, you said... Uh, we overheard you saying to the girl, if you did say it, because you could be lying, of course, to, the, to your young lady, Ricky, that uh, you would find out where your money had gone by using a bit of muscle. Yeah. Um, so that means that you're, you, you're fairly well in with a lot of villains in, in, Lon in London area, say. Well, I know a few people that might be considered villains, yeah. yes. And so we were told that, in fact, Richards was involved in stealing your money. Isn't it sort of a bit likely that you might have known who he was then? No, I didn't know who he was. You didn't find that no. strange? No, not at all, no. Okay. A lot of villains about, you know. Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> Leslie, it's time for your playback. You've amazingly requested a replay of the moment when Charles Rutland gets up to go to the loo. I hope it helps you. <laughs> oh, it will. It will. <laughs> Tell me, what about his beer? What about his beer? Well, he said he didn't drink it, so I wondered. Oh, well, I ordered it, if that's what you mean. Now, you ought to remember that, come to think of it, because that was about the time the captain made his announcement. Nothing. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Captain Reed here. We're now flying at 29,000 feet over the French town of Nantes, which you can see out of your port. That is the left-hand side. There's an expression of a Gosh, man who has yes. helped tremendously. <laughs> Unbelievably. Good. Absolutely fine. I just love the cut of the jacket. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'd like to ask a question. Well, of course. That's what May I? Here for. Yes, of course. Hang on. Where is it? Put your glasses. Put your glasses on. You can see no, it. we're all right. Uh, Charlie, you said to the sergeant, nobody passed by until the victim coughed it. That is not true, because, um, <laughs> don't panic. Whatever you do, don't panic. <laughs> Ricky Howard passed by. Did you not notice him? No, no, no. After the steward brought the drinks, nobody else passed by me. The steward went by me, went behind, as far as I can recall, and started to serve the major. Well, he certainly was in that direction. The next thing I knew was I was chatting with my wife, and this bloke suddenly fell on me. Yes, but in between that time, Ricky Howard passed you by. Richie did. I didn't see her. 
That seems strange. Mm. That seems very odd to me. Patrick, yes. No, yes I'd like to ask um, Sergeant Hollins uh, just two quick questions. Uh, wh what sort of a villain was Richards? Was he a dangerous guy? Well, the term is uh, known for armed robbery. I mean, he is very tasty. Very, very tasty. Not a pleasant fellow to know, I can assure you. So he might give you a bit of trouble? Oh, a lot, you yeah. know. Uh, just quickly, do you know, uh, you, you sussed out that arsenic very quickly. Are you used to smelling arsenic and knowing that? Well, I did six months on forensics, actually, yes. And it has a nasty smell? Well, yes, but I mean, it's also a common weed killer in Spain, and, you know, it's used quite frequently, I think. Yeah. There is. Can I ask Elsie a question, please? Mm -hmm. Elsie, um, you say that you're quite happily married, you know, within reason. Are you also a business partner with your husband? No, I have no... Nothing to do with that side of the affairs at all. Oh, he doesn't tell you anything about the sort of... No, we've always had that sort of arrangement between us, really. I think it's best that he looks after his side of things. Yes, and uh, when you saw Ricky in, in the hotel in Spain, did you know that she was your husband's girlfriend? I didn't know in that I can give you anything concrete, but I had ideas. Just a woman's intuition, we think. Right. Yes. Uh, one more quick question. Yes, may yeah. I... Yes, oh, please. Sorry, yes, no. quick question. May I ask why you say he knows which side his bread is buttered if you didn't know anything about his business jobs? I think you should ask him that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, quick question. Right, um, very quick. Ricky, was the victim the villain who had put you in the pudding club? No. Right, well, that I must ask you to stop. <laughs> a, a very prudent time to stop, I think. Um, now, it's time now for you to, uh, to fill in your cards, so just write down who you think done it oh, and your clues, golly. please. Uh, this, of course, also applies to our audience panel. So don't hesitate, just put down who you think the murderer is. Right, I shall now go and see how the panel are getting on. Honour? <whistles> Dear John, don't say anything, just smile if I'm right. <laughs> So I'm right? No. <laughs> no. I'm just laughing at his spelling. <laughs> <laughs> From Anushka and Patrick. <laughs> yeah, that should really fix it for you, is not it? Good. Right, now let's see if we have anything from our studio audience. Here are the studio audience's cards. Here we have a no. We have a yes, but no clues at all. Mm. Another no and a yes with one clue, two clues. Absolutely right. Many congratulations. That's splendid. George Handy, congratulations. Well done. <laughs> George, you win the Who Done It trophy, which I shall be happy to give you later on. Congratulations. Well done. Good. All right, now, panel, por favor, who done it and why? Who goes Honor? first, yes? Well, I think Elsie popped something into the beer on the tray uh, before it was served to Richards. And I think Charlie then placed the excess arsenic onto the body as it was dying because he shoved something in his pocket. And Elsie asked for the glass to be washed up of her own husband's uh, beer in case anything had dripped over or messed about or anything. Thank or you. Or they might have put it in both beers, I don't know which. So Elsie and Charlie. Yes. A double crime, right. Yes, Leslie, who done it? I think it was Charlie Rutland and Ricky Howard mm -hmm. because uh, he knew what the victim had drunk before because the sergeant had said in ordering the drink and he'll have what he had before. So he, he, he must have caught what... Uh, the victim was drinking. Mm -hmm. He didn't drink his beer because he planted one of the cans, the one with arsenic in it, when he went out, ostensibly to the loo, and he didn't know which can would be given to the victim, so he wouldn't touch his. Thank you very he much. I haven't finished it. I yeah. wanted to go under. He <laughs> lied. Yes, you have. I have. <laughs> he, lied about Get up. he lied about Ricky passing by, and she'd gone up to clear up the evidence. Thank you very much indeed. Thank yes. you very much. I think it was Detective Hollins, because I don't think he was Detective Hollins, I think that he was Richards, because nobody knew which was which, and um, he said at the end that he wanted to go and make a phone call and keep, and I thought, I think that was because he wanted the police to come on and he could get off, and also when he came into the airport lounge, 
um, it was Richards, I mean, who was the detective who was carrying the briefcase and who came in first. I've got a few more as well, but I think you want to hurry. That'll do, I think. That's <laughs> very good thought. Yes, Patrick. I agree. Pseudo Sergeant Hollins. He was very pleased about arriving in Manchester because he uh, he knew that if he landed in London, they would know that he wasn't really the policeman. Also, a policeman always sits on the outside in an aeroplane if he's got a villain with him. And also, when they arrived at Spain, Richards came through the door carrying the briefcase when they were handcuffed together, and the policeman would have been carrying the uh, the briefcase. And uh, I suppose he pinched the card off him when all the kerfuffle was going on with the body. So I see. <laughs> That's what you think. That is very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, we'll see if you're right. Will the real who done it? Stand up, please. I thought you looked too honest to be a real copper. <laughs> there we are. Congratulations, Neris. That's Thank very you. good. Oh, I think that's marvellous. Of special applause. <laughs> right. we'll, um, I think we'll give the prize to you as you are our special oh, guest, and you can be stepped in a moment's notice. But congratulations, Patrick, once again for getting it right. <laughs> good. Well, of course, the trick was that the villain <laughs> actually murdered the detective and then assumed his identity. But just to iron out the details for you, I'll show you how it was done with the clues. Well, first of all, you'd normally expect the criminal to be sitting on the inside when being escorted. Uh, on the diversion to Manchester announcement, Hollins reacted happily as he then saw a chance of murdering Richards and not being recognised as a bogus policeman by the Manchester police. The London police would, of course, uh, know the real Hollins by sight. Now, in the Major's flashback, Richards entered the lounge first, carrying a briefcase. Presumably a real policeman would lead the way. Charles Rutland even suggested that Richards looked like a cop. Most important of all, the beer was untouched before Selwood placed it in front of Richards. So Hollins was the only one with access to poison it. Now, if you look carefully, you can see Richards, alias Hollins, dropping something into the beer. And to put the cap on it, the poison couldn't have been arsenic because arsenic takes too much, uh, well, it takes much longer to kill somebody. It's simple, really, isn't it? Yes, well, I got it halfway through, but mind you, it doesn't help when you have the script in front of you. <laughs> Next week, the last show in our present series, it takes place in a television studio when the chairman of a television company gets uh, bumped off. Yes, it uh, might have been called The Revenge of the TV Workers. <laughs> but actually, the title is Beware Wet Paint. And if, uh, if you want to get a head start, try and work out how long it takes for floor paint to dry before next week. But until then, it's good night from our panel and our cast. And by the way, if you're flying anywhere in the near future, Never mind looking out for potential murderers. I should check the steward first. Yeah. <laughs> <Good night. laughs>